Get creative and learn how to make the perfect handmade gift with Skillshare's online classes. Now I've been taking iPhone photography, how to shoot and edit conceptual photos on your phone. It's taught by Adobe Creative Resident, Amelie Satcher. It's really helping me train my eye to take more beautiful pictures. This holiday season, give a gift that's one of a kind, completely personalized or perfectly imperfect. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash respect and get a free trial of premium membership. That's Skillshare.com slash respect. With the holiday season right around the corner, we're all getting into the spirit by indulging in the sights and sounds and scents of the season. One thing I made sure to do was update my Native collection with their candy cane holiday scent. Native has a holiday mini Dio trio that comes in candy cane, sugar cane, and vanilla and chai. I love that vanilla and chai. Shop Native's holiday collection today by going to nativedio.com slash ratchet or use promo code ratchet at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash ratchet or use promo code ratchet at checkout for 20% off your first order. Usual wines are wines for the modern drinker. Each bottle is 6.3 ounces, a heavy pour, or about a glass and a half of wine. Usual has a red blend, a rosé, and a sparkling white wine called Brut, which is my personal favorite. I know that you are ready to give Usual a try, so go check out their website at www.usualwines.com and use my discount code RATCHET for $8 off your first order and try your first glass on us. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. Y'all, I'm going to tell y'all in advance, I am not caught up on pop culture or politics this week. I have been buried in packing and shipping and post office runs, which I'm happy to do. No complaints. As much as I want all of your goodies to go to their forever homes and be with you, I also need my house back. So I am shipping this stuff out as fast as I can. Thank you for your patience. Some of you, I did a drop of the hoodies on Monday. And after the first round of stuff sold out, you know, the same day, when the hoodies became available, we were like, we'll we'll take all of them. Like, give us everything you got. And they did. And those lasted 45 minutes, maybe. So thank you. I'm working on another drop. We're trying to get as much merchandise as possible. And our printer, bless his heart, as soon as anything black comes available um, in any size, he'll hit us up and be like, hey, I got 60 of these. I got 130 of these. I got this. I got that to give us first dibs because he knows we're crazed. So we are working tirelessly (laughs) to get more merch. I don't want to give you a date or even an estimate on the next drop. Follow me on social media. I'll do my best to give 24 hours notice. A couple people have pointed out that these midday drops are killing them because they're on Zoom calls. I'll try to do the next job on a weekend or after work hours so everyone can get an opportunity to, um, to get what they want. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't say that enough for supporting Ratchet and Respectable. If you've been a longtime listener, you know that when I started this podcast almost two years ago, that I said I was going to do it for 90 days and, and just see how it goes. You know that meme? It's like how it started and how it's going. That's kind of how I feel right now. The second anniversary of Ratchet and Respectable is coming up. I think it's January 9th. That's coming up soon. And, you know, if, it, if there were not a global pandemic, I would do a party. It is a global pandemic, so that won't be happening. But God willing, for the third anniversary, we'll be able to celebrate in person. God willing. What else is going on? I have a black dentist in LA. Did we talk about my black dentist? I went to get my teeth cleaned a couple months ago and I found out that I had two cavities. So earlier today I got my fillings and my teeth are sore, which is 
common, but nonetheless, it's, it's not the most comfortable feeling and, you know, it could last for a while. So, but I love my dentist, even though this woman like assaulted my mouth, but like with my consent, first time I went, I can't remember. They were playing some good R and B Was it Anita Baker when I was in the waiting room and I was like, okay, this is a good sign. They were playing living single on the TV. And I was like, oh, this is highly entertaining. And then today I think it's called what men want. I never watched the whole film. It's the film with Taraji Henson and she can hear men's thoughts. Cute film. But that's what was playing while I was getting my feelings. I couldn't really hear it very much over the drill, but that's not the point. The point is, is that I really love my dentist. And I have to go back to the same dentist's office in the morning because I'm getting braces. I think in a perfect world, I can get them on my bottom row, but I'm probably going to need them on the top too because of the whole teeth alignment thing. So me and my sore mouth are going back tomorrow for more poking and prodding for this evaluation for my braces. So wish me luck. Send Advil because I know I'm going to be in pain. I wonder how that's going to affect my speech. Things you must think about when you're doing a podcast. I hope I don't get one of those weird lists, but I had braces when I was a kid and I didn't have one. I don't think. Well, we're about to find out. There are a lot of people with adult braces. I was talking about it on Facebook a couple weeks ago and on Instagram. We had a whole conversation about dental health, but there's a shift that happens to your teeth in your late 30s, early 40s. And especially if you had braces before and you didn't wear your retainer, those teeth just shift back to like what they were. Like my top row is still okay. It's not perfect, but it's, it's passable. But my bottom row, it's like borderline civil war in there. Like it's like an East versus West situation. It's really bad. And I passed it off for a while because I was like, well, you know, people aren't perfect. Imperfections make you beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And then one day I saw myself talking on video and I was like, oh my God, my teeth are embarrassing. So going to get that corrected. What else is going on? Oh, I'm really Christmassy this year in a way that I haven't been in a really long time. I don't know why that is, but like I've been watching Christmas movies nonstop. I've watched this Christmas because it's on Netflix, like at least six times. I'll put it on as background noise while I'm packing sometimes, but I'm like super into the holidays this year. I'm trying to find a real tree. In New York, they were on like every other corner. You leave your house and you run into someone selling Christmas trees. I don't know where to get them in LA. Hmm. But I want a real tree. When I left New York, I took my Christmas decorations with me and they're sitting in a, in a pair of boxes on top of my armoire um, here in LA. And I, I want to put up a tree. I want to put up a tree. I want to put lights on my balcony. I want a wreath on my door. Like I'm really into it this year. And because I'm not going back to the East Coast for Christmas, and a bunch of my friends who are from the East are staying in town this year as well. Nobody wants to risk infecting their parents with the COVID rates so high. So I had this idea and it was friend approved, like the group was down. We were going to go to Vegas and we were going to have drunk Christmas. So I know it's cold in Vegas. That's fine. I have my East Coast coats that I can't really wear here. I have my North Face. I have a couple faux furs. I have some other big fluffy coats and woolly sweaters and all of all of the things that make no sense really to wear in LA. Like it was 75 today. You can still walk around a t-shirt during the day. But we were going to go to Vegas and we were going to try to get in like a couple spa days. We were going to eat well. We were going to go to all the different hotels and see the Christmas lights. We were going to get cheap takeout for Christmas dinner and drink it with expensive champagne and a cute little hotel suite. It was going to be a thing. But I don't know what I was thinking. Like the COVID rates are like through the roof. All these cities are shutting down. Daddy Garcetti, LA mayor, is like yelling at us every day to stay in the damn house so we don't die. So I was like, you know what, that, that was your Christmas fantasy, Demetria. That was, that was a Christmas fantasy. But yeah, I was like perhaps going to, to Vegas and trying to spa and dine and mingle, even with masks on and, you know, doing your best to be socially distant from others, perhaps is not the best idea. So maybe drunk Christmas another year. It was a good idea. I mean, I think, but, you know, that's just me. I fully support United We Rise, a new Black-led national effort to unite and mobilize a collective force to end the HIV epidemic in our community and uplift the quality of life for hashtag every black body. The effort focuses its work within five key areas. One, black leadership and organizations. Two, black community engagement, 
three, policy, four, intersectionality, and five, sexual and gender identity. In all, UWR represents the diversity of the Black community and its leadership who are dedicated to HIV and racial justice for every Black body. The time is now for us to celebrate our diversity and the power in our unity. Support United We Rise. For more information on the United We Rise campaign or to volunteer, visit www.everyblackbody.org. There's, I don't know whether to call it good TV. Interesting TV, interesting TV. Actually, let's start with something that actually does look good. American Skin with Nate Parker. You remember Nate Parker from the Nat Turner film? It's a good film. It didn't really do well because of personal issues with Nate Parker. Not going to drag up exactly what he did. It's, it's been a while and, you know, he's publicly apologized, finally. But if you recall the issue, you remember that it was something that he did while he was in college. And when the issue came up many years later, he didn't quite handle it correctly. And he was duly punished for that. But, you know, I like to say that there's, there is grace for those that seek it. I do believe that he sought grace. I wish he had done so at the time because that, that Nat Turner film was, again, it was good. It was so murd in controversy because of him because he was the director, the producer, and the star. It was really difficult to separate the man from the art, so a lot of people just didn't support his work. But he's got a new film coming out, um, American Skin. It looks like some black people fantasy shit. And it's kind of in the same vein as um, the Nat Turner film, Birth of a Nation. That was the name of the film. I haven't seen it yet. But what I can glean from the commercials is a father and son are pulled over during a traffic stop. The son is killed by a white police officer. No charges are brought for the police officer, so there's no justice. And it seems that Nate Parker, as the father, comes back years later for revenge on the white police officer. It looks like he and some angry black friends take over a police precinct and decide to hold court with the officer among a jury of Parker's peers who may have a different perspective for obvious reasons on police and police stops and the killing of unarmed black folks. So it looks like a really good film. Hopefully I can see it sooner than later. Because of y'all really, I've been getting a lot of screeners to upcoming films because they want me to talk about it on the podcast. I only tell you about the stuff that's good. I get a lot of stuff that that ain't good. And I was like, I'm not promoting your ish if it's trash because they're going to be mad at me. Like, why are you telling me to watch this trash film? But American Skin actually looks good. It's it's produced, I think, by Spike Lee. So that I am looking forward to. Lifetime has a series of films coming out, which I'm just like, some look good because they're good. Other ones look good because it looks like a train wreck and I just can't wait to watch how bad it is. The Salt and Pepper film, I think we've known about this one for a while. Lifetime is doing a biopic about Salt and Pepper, which I'm really excited about. I grew up on them, and my first big TV appearance was on um, Peppa had a reality show on VH1, and I was her dating expert. I, I took her to happy hour. She's, she's been famous since she was a teenager, so she'd never just been to like an after work happy hour or anything like that. So I took her to her first happy hour. It was interesting times. I was over the moon because like I remember being maybe like 10 or 11 and I dressed up as Salt and Pepper from the Push It video for Halloween one year. Bodysuit and all. I don't think my parents knew the song. So I was over the moon to, um, to meet her and to hang out with her. But this movie is written by the same person that did the Bobby Brown movie and the New Edition movie for BET which was really, really good. I've watched both of them multiple times. Like I thought that was really well done. So I have high hopes for this one. I'm not familiar with the work of the lead actresses, but I have high expectations that the script is good. That's half the battle. So I'm looking forward to that. There's also um, a Wendy Williams biopic. Wendy debuted the trailer on her show earlier this week. Wendy has had a, um, a fruitful, a fruitful career. Lots of Lots of highs, lots of lows. There's, there's a lot of story to be told. And apparently she's going to tell it all in this biopic. It looks like a shit show, which means I can't wait to watch. 
I love really, really, really good movies. And I love like really horrible, how the fuck did this get on the air type movies too. But I predict that this Wendy Williams film will be excellent dragging TV. All Wendy cares about is the ratings. So she will definitely get them. I will, I will definitely be tuned in for this one. Speaking of shit shows, there's a KFC film with Mario Lopez as Colonel Sanders. I, I'm not even making that shit up. I, like, in my wildest of make shit up dreams, this is why I don't write fiction. Because sometimes people will be like, Demetria, you should write fiction. You do great narrative. And I'm like, no, because I can't make up shit that's more entertaining than real life. Like, no one was sitting around thinking, you know what we need? A Colonel Sanders film. We need a film about the life of Colonel Sanders as produced by KFC. And you know who should star in it? Mario Lopez. Like, what? But this is it. The funny thing is he actually doesn't look half bad as Colonel Sanders. It's, it's, it's a mind fuck. It's really weird. But I, let me read you the, the synopsis. I just, want you, I just want to make sure that you caught that this film is being produced by Kentucky Fried Chicken. The chicken people are producing a film about their founder. The trailer looks horrible. It looks so campy and over the top. It's called A Recipe for Seduction. And Lifetime describes it as, quote, a deep fried love affair brought to you by KFC. Now, this airs on Sunday at noon. I just want you to know that I'm, I'm not being paid for this plug. This looks fucking terrible on like Sharknado type levels. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. It looks horrible. I cannot wait to watch. Oh, Twitter is going to be amazing. Amazing on Sunday. Can't wait. Can't wait. This holiday season, give a gift that means more. Get creative and learn how to make the perfect handmade gift with Skillshare's online classes. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Now, I've been taking iPhone photography, how to shoot and edit conceptual photos on your phone. It's taught by Adobe creative resident, Amelie Satcher. It's really helping me train my eye to take more beautiful pictures. When you put time, effort, and creativity into a gift, it shows how much you care. This holiday season, give a gift that's one of a kind, completely personalized, or perfectly imperfect. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com respect and get a free trial of premium membership. That's Skillshare.com respect. It's time to revive an important annual debate. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? I haven't seen Die Hard in years. Unfortunately, if you go to Netflix, you'll discover a shocking lack of Die Hard. Tis the season to be thankful though. You can access a Netflix library where Die Hard is actually available with ExpressVPN. This weekend, I did just that to access German Netflix. It's super easy. I just fired up the ExpressVPN app, changed my location, refreshed Netflix, and that's it. ExpressVPN changes your IP address so you can control where sites think you're located. You can choose from almost 100 different countries. Just think about all the Netflix libraries you can go through. And of course, it's not just for Die Hard. You can use ExpressVPN to access thousands of new titles on Netflix, Disney+, BBC iPlayer, you name it. ExpressVPN is ridiculously fast for streaming movies. There's never any buffering and it always streams in 4K or HD. ExpressVPN is also compatible with all your devices, so you can watch what you want on the go or on the big screen. yippee kai yay if you visit my special link right now at expressvpn.com slash ratchet, you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free on a one-year package. Support the show, watch what you want, and protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash ratchet. Are there any other good things happening? Oh, things. Not a good thing. An unfortunate thing. A thing that makes me unhappy. There is a video circulating of, I was going to call him a gentleman, but he was not such, a, 
a dating, I don't know if I want to give him the title of an expert or advisor, a man giving dating advice. I think he's based in Atlanta, but he was giving dating advice to a young woman who, and I have not watched the video. I'll tell you why in a moment, but he was giving dating advice to a young woman who is making six figures. She's a single mom, black woman, just for clarity. And she told this guy that she wanted a six figure man. And he told her that she was average looking. She was a single mom and she would probably never get married and be alone forever. I don't talk about dating and relationships as much as I I did previously. I think because I've primarily worked in that space for so long that when these things happen, people send them to me. I received that video. I was tagged in that video easily a hundred times. And I, and I, I, I'd read a summary about it. I'd seen the conversations about it, like people debating it. Um, and I'd read an article about it, but I just, I refused to watch it. And if you remember, I think it was the first time that Dr. Stacey Patton came on the show. And I had, I had a question about how that video where George Floyd was murdered, which I still haven't watched. I was asking her like, why is this video being run on a loop on all of these channels? Like it's, it's, it's hurtful. It's disturbing. It's sick. Like we're watching a video of a man being murdered. Like why do they keep playing it? She gave me some historical context about Black pain is entertainment for white people. Black torture as entertainment for white people. She talked about how going to watch lynchings was a family affair. You take your children. As much as lynchings were a fear tactic for black people, they were a bonding ritual for white people to reinforce their feelings of, of superiority. But I thought about that when this video was circulating. If watching videos of a black person being murdered in the case of George Floyd, but there's other videos that have come out of black people being beaten or harassed or mistreated. And they'll circulate with a lot of frequency as well. Right. And somehow we recognize that like watching videos of black men being mistreated is bad for the psyche of black people. But we never talk about how watching these videos and reading these articles and seeing these memes of black women being treated so horribly, like what that does to the psyche of black women. I think it's very much in the same vein that Dr. Patton described lynchings is that these memes and these articles and these status updates and these entertainers that are constantly circulating, that are tearing down black women, I think they're definitely used as a fear tactic, as a way to reinforce to women to know their place. And I also think it's in the same way that like white people gather for lynchings. I also think this is the same kind of bonding ritual for the men who do it to reinforce their perceived superiority over women. If you look at the comment section of anyone talking about these videos, it's so many men just tearing down women. Women are gold diggers. Women are fat. Women are ugly. Black women have attitudes. That's why we date white women. It's just like all these lists of things that are always wrong with black women. And while you do see a couple of pick me girls who will jump in the mix and side with the men, more often than not, it's a big circle jerk among black men talking about how horrible black women are. Like they get off on that shit. It's disgusting. But it's in the same way that white folks would go to lynchings and, and bond, bring their kids, take pictures, family affair. But that's what so many guys do. And not all. Cause I don't want to accuse all men of that. There were definitely some men that were like, yo, it's terrible the way he talked to that woman. That wasn't right. But a lot of men, the vast majority of the conversations that I saw about that video were not men denouncing it. It was men being like, oh, well, women are gold diggers. You know, it's also interesting earlier this week, I got um, a two year reminder from one of the questions that came up when I used to do the Ask Demetria series on social media. And it was a woman who wanted to buy a house, but she thought she should wait to buy one with a man because as a single woman owning a house, she thought it would turn off men. And I was thinking about that kind of in relation to the conversations that I was seeing about that video that's been circulating. And it's like, there's not a win for women. 
if you say you want a man who earns what you do, because this woman earns six figures and she said, I want a six figure man. She's asking for what she is, right? Then you call it a gold digger. But if you go and buy a home on your own, but then you're too independent and you don't need a man. So it's like, if I want you to be my partner and my equal, I'm a gold digger. But then if I go and have financial success and have the markers to show for it, then I'm too independent and you don't want me then either. So like, what, what is a woman supposed to do? I mean, in my head is go on and get your shit and find somebody who likes it or, or be alone. Cause playing small for a man is not the move. I've been there, done that. Not a good idea. Do not recommend. Very get up one star. But this catch 22 that we put women in where like nothing they do is right. It's just frustrating. I don't feel the weight of it like I used to, I guess, in my 20s and 30s. I I heard people talk about how you reach 40 and you reach this new level of I don't give a fuck. And I haven't given a fuck in years. So I was like, I don't think I can really activate another level of no fuck giving. I was like, I think I've tapped out a while ago. And they were like, just wait. But I'm only 41 and I'm already like, oh shit, like I really don't care. Either it works for me or it doesn't. Does it bring me peace? If not, I can't do it. That's my bottom line, peace. Everything else is secondary. Like I believe in family, but family don't bring peace. They could go too. I'm just saying. Love my friends. I may have to love you from afar. If you're not bringing peace, you can go too. With the holiday season right around the corner, we're all getting into the spirit by indulging in the sights and sounds and scents of the season. One thing I made sure to do was update my Native collection with their candy cane holiday scent. Native has a holiday mini Dio trio that comes in candy cane, sugar cane, and vanilla and chai. I love that vanilla and chai. Native is the perfect addition to your daily routine this holiday season. Their candy cane gift set also makes for a great gift option and all Native products are great stocking stuffers for everyone on your list. Native is risk-free to try. Every product comes with free shipping within the U.S. plus free 30-day returns and exchanges. See why so many people love Native and check out their over 14,000 five-star reviews. You can also check out the Native newsletter for product updates. Shop Native's holiday collection today by going to nativedo.com slash ratchet or use promo code ratchet at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedo.com slash ratchet or use promo code ratchet at checkout for 20% off your first order. Believe it or not, the holidays are almost here. It's been a strange few months, so why not give friends and family the gift that puts a jingle back in their step? A great pair of socks can be the perfect holiday gift for everyone on your list. And with features, every pair feels like a custom fit. That's probably my favorite thing about features. I love when I slide it on. It feels like the sock is giving my foot just a perfect little hug. Elite runners around the world have loved features for years, but they're not just for runners anymore. Features has tons of styles to choose from, from no-show to knee-highs, ultra-light knit to maximum cushion, and with designs tailored for everyday wear, athletic performance, and extra support. These are not your average pair of socks because no other sock gives you a custom-like fit the way Features does. They are highly durable, ultra comfortable, and meticulously designed for performance. And if you would like a pair of features, and I know you do, you can get $10 off your first pair of features just in time for the holidays. Go to features.com slash ratchet for $10 off your first pair. That's F-E-E-T-U-R-E-S dot com slash ratchet. Usual wines are wines for the modern drinker. Each bottle is 6.3 ounces, a heavy pour, or about a glass and a half of wine. No more pouring wine down the sink when you don't want to finish the bottle. Because of the single serve format and bottle design, Usual is always fresh, so no more flat bubbly or stale rosé. Usual has a red blend, a rosé, and a sparkling white wine called Brut, which is my personal favorite. Usual wines are made from world-class AVAs in California, like Napa, Sonoma, and Santa Barbara, and are made with minimal intervention, zero sugar, and zero additives. 
more on no sugar. Did you know that in the U.S. there are 60 additives allowed by law to be used in winemaking? Usual doesn't use any chemical or sugar additives to enhance its flavors. In fact, usual wines are fermented until no more sugars are in the wine. This ensures the wines are as dry as possible and lower in calories. I know that you are ready to give Usual a try, so go check out their website at www.usualwines.com and use my discount code RATCHET for $8 off your first order and try your first glass on us. Mm, There's one more thing that I wanted to talk about. Did you see the Red Table Talk with Olivia Jade? If you have no clue who that is, I did not either. She's the daughter of Lori Laughlin, a.k.a. Aunt Becky from Full House, and the designer Massimo. Remember the college admission scandals where a bunch of wealthy people had paid to get their children into high-profile schools? She's one of the kids. Her parents paid $500,000 to a college admissions quote-unquote counselor in order to get their daughter into USC. I was like, 500000 to get into USC? Like, that's more than all the tuition. She seemed like a nice girl. But my first thought when I heard 500000 I was like, how dumb was she? Like, you couldn't get her into anywhere or you just really wanted to get her into USC? In fairness, USC is a really good school. It's actually not so far from my house. And I go to the Trader Joe's that's on the USC campus, which is next door to the Target, which is also on the USC campus. Them folks got a fully stocked Trader Joe's and Target on campus. It's a beautiful campus. It's gorgeous. It's in a weird area though, because you would think like a school like USC, which is very fancy and very to-do, would be like in a very fancy and to-do area. Not so much. It's like, it ain't the hood, but it ain't that far above it. Okay, so USC, it looks good on a resume. It's kind of like the NYU of the West. And NYU is my alma mater. And I, I get why you would want your kid to get into a prestigious school. But 500000 I mean, obviously they had the money. Maybe 500000 wasn't a lot to them because they spent it to get this Olivia into the school. And they also did the same thing for the older daughter. I was like, what kind of high school did y'all send these kids to? Y'all didn't do like everybody else and send your kids to prep school? which spends four years preparing them for the SAT. I mean, that's the normal way to do it. Or you donate money to the college and then they admit your kid. I mean, that's the normal way that doesn't get you locked up. But they chose a different route. Both of her parents are currently locked up. I think it's 60 day sentences, which in the grand scheme of things is not much, but still they locked up. And they're locked up during a global pandemic, which that's a lot, that's a lot. I mean, they needed some jail, but the COVID part of it, I was like, they're not killers. But even after I found out who Olivia Jade was, I had absolutely zero interest in hearing from her. I just don't care. But after it aired, most of the press was talking about how Gammy, Jada's mom, was giving this chick the business. And I was like, oh, Gammy's out here reading, folks. I want to see that. I like a little tawdriness in my life sometimes. Don't judge me. So I tuned in to watch the episode and Gammy did not disappoint. I mean, she went off on old girl. She was like, you know, I really don't see a point in you being here. I was arguing with Jada that you should not be here. Clearly, I lost the fight. But she was like, really, I'm no fan of you, and I didn't want you here. Which I was like, Cammy. But the truth must be spoken sometimes. I wasn't mad. And then she also pointed out to her, and she was like, yo, you're coming to three black women to absolve yourself, and black women don't get these choices. She was like, white women don't open up their spaces. They don't open up their hearts to absolve black women when they fall short. Black women, when called, show up for everyone. But when we need something, that help is not returned. She didn't specifically mention the white women who voted for Trump. Was it 59%? Are we up to 59? High 50s. She didn't specifically mention them, but that's exactly what I thought about. And I couldn't be mad at anything she said because I was like, yes, this is the truth as I know it to be. And she kept saying she's coming here to give this talk, but like she's going to be okay. Her parents are millionaires. She's going to be fine. A black child in this situation wouldn't get this form in a white space and she wouldn't get this forgiveness. She wouldn't get this understanding. She wouldn't give it a place to explain herself and share her point of view and and evoke sympathy from people. Like, why are we doing this? Which again, it's the truth as I know it to be. I have no issues with what she said. And not but, but because I don't want to subtract from supporting her opinion. There was part of me that felt maybe that 
although everything Gammy said was true, it might have been directed at the wrong person. Her thoughts about the worst of white women, but she's saying it to a 21-year-old girl who's sitting at the table. And she really held her to task about her privilege and acknowledging her privilege and just being like, you know, you're, o- you're going to be okay and I don't know why you're here and I didn't really want you here, right? And the girl is privileged, like, no question. But I was also like, she's a 21-year-old girl. Yeah, she's privileged and yeah, she was self-absorbed. But who isn't at 21? The vast majority of people are self-absorbed, period. But it was just like she took out a lot of this anger on this girl, which I kind of felt was a lot. But then I also was thinking that, like, if you don't address Karen mindsets and Karen behavior in children, because 21 is a kid, if you don't address it in kids, then they grow up to be these obnoxious white women who flip out in public and call the police because someone asked them to put their dog on the leash or they flip out because they think someone left leaves on their property or because someone asked them to wear a mask in Walmart. It needs to be addressed. So I just, I don't know. I know why she did it. I get why she did it. It was probably best that she did it. It was just weird that she was doing it to this 21 year old. I feel like she took out all of her angst about white women on this one white girl sitting in front of her. Technically a woman, but 21. I call 21 year old black people boys and girls. I mean, you're technically grown, but are you really? You're 21, what do you know? I don't know. I just, uh. But Olivia came across well. She was well PR trained. She said all of the right things. She took all of the right accountability. She seemed to be very honest. Jada said something like, were you angry with your parents? And she was like, when it first happened, no. She was like, this is something that everybody does. I didn't understand why people were upset. And then she was like, over time, when I was seeing the reactions and reading about it, I was like, oh, okay, this is the issue. Like, okay, like we had privilege and we used it in a horrible way. And there are so many people that don't have the opportunities that I just totally took for granted. I understand now. She came across well, which was the whole point of the interview, to clean up her image. The, her publicist needs a raise. That was an amazing interview. It did great. I'm glad that I watched. I'm glad that she shared her perspective. But I also think in many ways, and I know this is not going to be well received, received, especially with the audience that I'm speaking to, but I just kind of felt like she was kind of a victim in all of this too. She didn't know what her parents were doing. They didn't tell her. And even if they did, she was an 18-year-old freshman when it happened. Like, you're not really having much independent thought from your parents as an 18-year-old. Her parents did this dumb shit. She's the face of it. She's one of the faces of it because she's the person, along with her sister, who it was done for. So she gets all of the scorn as the person who benefited from what her parents did. But she didn't know. And I'm not saying that to absolve her. I'm just saying that... I recognize that white women can be absolutely and horribly terrible, but I also recognize when like you're talking to a kid who might have benefited from what her parents did, but was also a victim of what they did. I felt bad for the girl and not because she's white and because she's pretty, but because she's like 21 and she's really young and she doesn't really understand life and how it works. And I feel like Gammy especially, and again, she was not wrong, but she heaped a lot of her issues with white women onto this girl It needed to be said, especially for the white women watching, but I just kind of felt bad that that young girl received it. I mean, and like Gammy said, she'll be okay. Like her feelings might've been hurt in the moment and she took it like a G, but again, she's going to be okay. She's going to be better off than probably everybody listening to this podcast. So like my sympathy is not pouring over. It's not dripping. I don't want to actually like do anything about it. I'm just saying I felt bad for her. That's all. Because her parents are going to get out of jail and they're going to lay low for a minute and then they're going to go on an apology tour and then everyone's going to forgive them and then they're going to go back to work. And this whole college admission scandal is going to be a footnote in their lives. It's going to be something bad that happened in the past that they've all moved on from and it's not going to really affect them in any way. So again, not overflowing with empathy, just felt bad for the girl in the moment. It's a good interview though. I wonder who her publicist is probably very, very expensive. Someone most of us cannot afford. But it's a damn good publicist because the girl was trained. She said everything that she was supposed to. So that is the episode this week, y'all. I know it's a little shorter than usual. 
But I took y'all money for merch and I got to get y'all shit out. Because like I said before, y'all not going to talk about D I ordered, I didn't get. These were my Christmas presents. You've ruined Christmas. I'm not trying to hear that shit. I'm going to get you your ish on time. Thank you, as usual, for listening to Ratchet and Respectable. I'll be back next week, hopefully with a really good announcement. There's a couple things on the horizon, but there's one thing in particular that I can't wait to share with you. We just got to work out a few more details with this contract. So hopefully good news to share next week. Send me positive vibes. I'm sending them to you, but send them back to me to hope this thing that I really want works out in our favor. Hint, hint. Okay. So that's really everything. If you need some Ratchet and Respectable in your life before next episode, please follow me on social media if you're not already, at Demetria L. Lucas on Facebook and Instagram, and occasionally on Twitter. I don't tweet that much, but I may live tweet some of this wild TV coming down the pipeline. And also follow if you're interested in Ratchet and Respectable merch to keep up with the drop dates. I'm ordering as many flasks and mugs and shirts and Vs and sweatshirts and hoodies that I can get my hands on. So hopefully we can meet the demand with this next drop. If not, we'll keep trying. So thank you again for listening to Ratchet and Respectable, and we will talk again soon. Okay, bye.